Dragapult is a Dragon Ghost type Pokemon introduced in Generation 8 and it has one of the best designs in Pokemon history. And if you don't agree with that, you deserve to die. In Minecraft, being one of my favorite Pokemon, I've wanted to make a Dragapult figure for a long time, but then I thought, why settle for just one figure when I could make the whole evolutionary line? So without further ado, let's begin. As always, I started drawing a guide that would help me to keep the proportions of the figure under control. Dragapult's body is relatively simple, so I left it for later, and decided to work on the head first. Since it has a pretty geometrical shape, asymmetry was something I was worried about, since it would be easily noticed, so to avoid that, I decided that the best thing to do was to make it in two parts, and then glue them in the middle. That way, I could make sure that they would end up being of the same length and thickness. After that, I made the upper and lower details of the head, nothing too difficult, until it was time to do these things here. For this, I made a couple of anorexic pyramid-shaped pieces, and then glued them onto the head and let them dry for a couple of hours, enough to let the outer part to dry, but keeping the inner part fresh. That way, I could secure the shape of this piece and dig that triangular hole pretty easily and without fear of ruining what I had already done. This technique of leaving something to dry for a while to secure the general shape and then make some kind of modification, taking advantage of the still fresh core, can be useful in many scenarios, don't forget it. With that, the head was finished, so it was time to work on the body. A body relatively easy to sculpt, at least the torso and the tail are extremely basic shapes compared to the head, and this is one of the reasons why I love Dragapult so much. It is a complex design, but it is not overloaded with details to the point where it becomes overwhelming, everything is in perfect balance, both in shapes and colors. Plus, the concept is somewhat ridiculous, a floating diplocaulus with a stealth bomber themed head that likes to fire his kids like rockets and that looks like all the time is waiting for his nail polish to dry. Describe that to a friend, well, actually I don't think you have any friends. Describe that to your mom and she'll have no idea what the f you're talking about. It is one of those designs that shouldn't work, but it does. And those are the designs that I like the most. Dragapult is extremely ridiculous, but it doesn't look like that. It looks fantastic. As I said, the body was easy to sculpt, the legs and arms were the hardest parts. Well, not really, the little fingers were the hardest part. They were pretty tiny. But once that was done, I stuck the legs and arms in place, and with that, the head and the body were ready to be attached together. Again, with the help of a wire and super glue, and also a little bit of epoxy as a reinforcement. Dragapult's colors are another feature that I really like. They are not colors that you see combined frequently, and if they had been used inappropriately, it could have ruined the design. But now, whoever designed this Pokemon is a true genius. They really know what they were doing and ended up creating a true wonder. And while we're on the subject, question of the day. Let me know your favorite Pokemon. Others that I really like are Kyogre, Metagross, Arcanine, Reshiram, Poliwhirl, and Corviknight. Unfortunately, Dragapult's pre-evolution is not among my favorites, but it was time to make it. Dracloak is like Dragapult, but less fun, less interesting and less colorful, so I didn't make a very detailed guide drawing and just traced this image. And if Dragapult's body was easy to make, Dracloak's body was even more so. The torso was almost the same, but the tail was just a little pointy thing. Instead of legs, it has these fins, I don't know what they are. And the arms are just a little noodle with a tiny flat hand. The head is a bit more interesting. This time I didn't make two pieces to glue them together. Instead I flattened a bit of clay until I got a sheet of about 3mm thick. And then I cut out the silhouette of the head from a piece of paper. Of course, making sure it was symmetrical. And when the clay sheet had dried, I traced the shape of the head with the help of the guide and cut it. With that, the silhouette of the head was ready. But as you can see, Dracloak's head is not completely flat. So I had to make this little mountain here. And with the head completely dry, I put the eyes and the lower jaw. The last missing details were these triangles here, they weren't too hard to make.
and with that done I glued the head onto the body. At this point I would say it's time to paint, but if we look at this image here we can see that each drag cloak comes with their own drippy and my big brain told me to make the drippy first and then paint them. That's a smart way of doing things, you know, to save time. And if drag cloak was easier than dragapult, drippy is way 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 easier. So I won't take too long explaining this part. Holy sh! I already showed the whole process. Holy f! Okay, now it's time to paint. Painting Dracloak was way easier than painting Dragapult, so I won't take too long explaining this part. In fact, I won't even explain it. F you. Just look at the video. See? Pretty easy. And if painting Dracloak was easy, painting Drippy was like painting something that's. Uh, something that's easy to paint. I don't know, I couldn't think of a good metaphor there. Shut up. At this point I had Drippy, Dracloak and Dragapult pretty much finished, but I didn't know what to do with them. I knew that I wanted to make some sort of diorama. In fact, I had made the poses thinking about that. I made several sketches thinking about the different possibilities, but no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't come up with a good idea. I drew and drew and stimulated my mind, trying to ejaculate all kinds of ideas. I spent days and nights looking at all the possible configurations in which I could arrange these figures on a diorama, until I finally succeeded. This was the sketch that convinced me the most. So basically this is a big and long rock. Here we can see Dragapult firing his two little babies into the dark dimension. And here we can see a couple of drag logs. Yes, I said a couple, so I had to make another one. But for now, it is time to make the big long rock. For this I used the base of a figure that will never see the light of day as the core and wrapped it with a good amount of clay until I got the shape that I wanted. At this point the rock looked kinda small, so to give it more height and presence I decided to make a base. Yes, a base for the base. So I grabbed an absurd amount of aluminum foil and made the core and with a good amount of clay mixed with brown paint I wrapped it completely. And then it was just a matter of pinching here and there and texturing here and there until it started to look like a big rock. And of course the long rock also received this treatment. Since these pieces were so dense, I had to wait for a couple of days for them to dry completely. With the help of some epoxy and super glue, I attached both parts together and at this point my plan was to blend the seam and call it a day, but I realized that this rock didn't look rocky enough, it looked flat, visually poor, like an uninspired turf, so I covered the base with clay again, but this time I did it little by little, that way I could focus better on each part and to make sure it was well textured I used a small ball of aluminum foil. Once the base dried completely I decided to give it a black wash to make those textures stand out even more, followed by a grey dry brush which I didn't like, I feel like it was very pale and boring and lame and shit, so later I ended up changing it, so what you're watching right now turned out to be a total big fat waste of time. Considering that the base ended up with more space than I had planned, I thought it would be a good idea to make some additional small Pokemon just to decorate the base. Since Dragapult, a Pokemon from Galar, was the main character of this piece, I decided to make some Pokemon from Galar as well. As I said, I made small Pokemon. In these final stages, I just wanted to finish this thing, so I just made some easy and small and simple Pokemon. I wasn't going to decorate the base with Rillaboom riding on Corviknight. In total, I made three of the Goss, two Gossifleur, and three Appling. Now, do you like plants? And what about flowers? I realized that with just the Pokemon that I had made, it wouldn't be enough to give the base the power that it needed, so I decided to make a bunch of flowers and plants. If you're interested in learning how to make them, I just uploaded a video about it, I'll leave the link in the description. So, in order to put them onto the base, I started to put blobs of green clay in different places, then I gave them some texture to make them look like grass, and while they were still fresh, I stuck the flowers, plants and Pokemon on it. As I said, I didn't like the shitty, lame and boring color of the rock, so I replaced it with a more yellowish tone, and on top of that I gave it a green dry brush. Then with the help of some wires, I attached the drag cloaks in a way that they seemed to be floating, or at least that was the idea. And with that it was time to attach Dragapult, but before that I made those blast effects, 
because, as I said, the idea was to show him firing his poor innocent babies, and right after attaching Dragapult to the base, it was time to work on those babies. So, I covered about 70% of a 10 cm long wire with white clay, and then covered the rest with orange clay, trying to get a gradient effect, which didn't turn out to be as gradient as I would've liked, but I would fix that later with yellow paint. The next step was to make this blob at the tip, and then I glued the little drippies. Then I made another one of these and glued them to Dragapult's head and gave them some curves to make them look dynamic. Okay, and that's it! Did you like it? If so, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and ring the bell and all that. It wasn't extremely difficult, but it did take some time. Okay, let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, that's it. Bye.